Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is October 14, 2018. This is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. The flowers on the chancel stands are given to the glory of God by Drs. Abbott and Pompoutius in memory of Russ and Dolores Mittman, by Gina, Pastor, Matthew, and Victor in honor of Sarah Pollock's birthday. St. John's has an outreach store open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 1, closed on Thursday. And a food pantry open Wednesdays, 9, 9 o'clock to 10.45. Pastor John, the Reverend Good John morning. H. Pollock. And welcome to our worship service this morning. A special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield, Clark County area, are looking for a new church home in Bison Lake St. John, your new church home. One note on our worship this morning had been announcing that today we would begin having the children sermon on non uh, communion Sundays. Unfortunately, my wife Gina is sick today, so it will be postponed until the uh, fourth Sunday of the month. Reformation Sunday, so there won't be uh, the children's sermon as promised this morning. We begin by preparing our hearts and minds for worship with the word of confession and forgiveness. So I ask those who can stand without difficulty, please stand as we turn to page 94 in the front of our In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call to a minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now begin to worship with hymn number 834, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Hymn number 834 in the back of your great name.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nothing to do with the pilgrims and the Indians and 
first Thanksgiving today and we would give thanks to God. So I uh, join us on that Tuesday before Thanksgiving for this new special Thanksgiving service as well. Now I ask that you give your attention to the call. Of salvation. So when we talk about children 
of the light, we are talking about those who in the eyes of God are saved. Children of the day, however, is a phrase we only find uniquely to St. Paul. And in this phrase, he is attempting to unite or link the concept of light and day. His thinking takes us back to Genesis, the first chapter, where in verses 3 to 5 we read, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So at the beginning of creation, God was making this distinction between light and darkness. And as Judaism developed, and then as Christianity developed, light became that symbol of those who follow God. Light became the symbol of those who are the people of God. And so because Jesus is the light of the world, we are children of the light. But it doesn't stop there. We are also called to live godly lives as people who belong to the dead. St. Paul then picks this idea up in verse 8 of that fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. When he says, but since we belong to the day, we belong to the light, Jesus Christ, day, we don't belong to the darkness, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So belonging to light, being of the day, we have the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet, the hope of salvation. Not just the hope of salvation, but the promise of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So being a child of the light and of the day, we are destined to inherit salvation. Destined to inherit it because of faith, not because of anything we do. Don't think that you somehow do something to inherit that destination of salvation. It is God's gift. Those of you who were here last week may recall us talking about the inheritance of salvation that we have through our faith in Jesus Christ. St. Paul here is re-emphasizing that. We are destined to inherit salvation all because of believing in the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Belonging to God through Jesus Christ, we are to hold up the light of Christ as the seasick man held up that light in his cabin so that the drowning man could see the light, so that the rescuers could see his illuminated hand and rescue him from drowning in the sea. We are the light of the darkness of the world. Jesus has given us that responsibility. Through the Holy Spirit, faith works in us and if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, we then allow it to enable us to share the light with others. We allow the Holy Spirit to enable us to hold up the light in the darkness so those who are drowning in sin, those who are drowning in separation from God, those who are drowning in the sentence of condemnation, can be rescued the light of Jesus Christ. All this begins with faith. As St. Paul tells us, faith comes from hearing, hearing from the Word of God. So we have to proclaim the good news of the Gospel to Jesus Christ, to everyone, so that they may hear it. We cannot be intimidated from sharing the good news to others, even if they first resist. A lot of times someone will resist you try to share the good news with them. But you come back to them a second or third time and then suddenly allow the Holy Spirit to call them through the gospel 
and give them that gift of faith, that gift of prayer. You can be the light in the darkness. That is what our responsibility is. There is a zoo here in America which has that tropical birdhouse. And they have another house for regular birds. This one is just for tropical birds, and there's a special reason for that. As you enter this bird, that tropical bird house, you immediately notice that the hallways are all dark, that you have to walk in darkness. On either side of you, as you begin, are glass cases in which you see tropical birds flying around and, and doing tropical bird things. But as you go on down, you come to a miniature rainforest. And in this rainforest, there's a waterfall and a pool and trees and all sorts of plants. And among these trees and plants and rocky ledges, the small, brightly colored birds fly around doing their thing. You soon notice that there's no glass between you and the birds. You could actually reach in and touch the birds if there weren't signs all over the place telling you not to do that. And so the question arises, why don't the birds fly? Why don't they fly to where you are and down the hall and out the door? Fly to freedom. Well, there is a note on the exhibit that explains why they don't. These certain tropical birds are afraid of the dark. They do not seek out darkness. When darkness comes, they immediately fall asleep. And so as long as they are in the light, they're not going to fly to you in the darkness. Doesn't matter how much you call them, doesn't matter if you wave some tree or whatever, they are so terrified of the dark that they will not leave the light. Of course, when they're out in nature, when darkness comes, they find their roosting spot and they go to sleep. I imagine at the zoo once the visiting nights are over, they probably turn the lights off so they'll have some sleep. They hate the darkness. That is what we as Christians are to hate the darkness. We're supposed to hate it so much that we want to share the light of Christ with others. We want to be a light in the darkness for those who are still in that darkness. As Christians, we are the light of the kingdom of God. We have been called out of the darkness to shine our light for those who still live in the darkness. In our sermon text, in that when St. Paul says we are not of the night or the darkness, the word darkness it means, first of all, it has a meaning of obscurity. That if you're in the darkness, you're in obscurity. Where probably my nose or notices. But it has two more meanings, which are what St. Paul means when he says we're not of the darkness. The first is the meaning of spiritual darkness. It is broad daylight right now, but I can guarantee you there are hundreds of all hundreds of people in the city of Springfield and in Clark County who are in the darkness. Because they're either atheists or agnostic or followers of some other religion. They are unaware of salvation in Jesus Christ. Or they have rejected the offer of salvation in Jesus Christ. So they're in spiritual darkness. They may be on a spiritual journey. They may be looking to try to find spiritual comfort, spiritual help, spiritual salvation, but they have yet to come to this true source, God's only Son, Jesus Christ. Sent to the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved from Him. So they're in this spiritual darkness. It doesn't matter what they follow. If they're not following Jesus Christ, they're in spiritual darkness. That's what St. Paul claims. The word also means to be ignorant of sin and misery. Now nobody, whether they're atheists or agnostic or the followers of some other religion, is 
not Abraham of misery. When we mean misery in the sense of human suffering. All we have to do is pick up a newspaper or watch the news and we see all kinds of misery. Misery from hurricanes, from tornadoes, from floods, earthquakes, volcano eruptions. Misery from poverty, misery from wars, misery from conflicts, misery from uh, gang violence and the like. But this is not what the word is talking about. It's not talking about physical misery that either comes from nature or is in, uh, influenced by people or caused by people. This is talking about being ignorant of the misery of separation from God and a life of eternal condemnation. They are ignorant of the effects of sin and what it does to our lives. Now they may have a conscience which bothers them when they do something wrong, but they have no way of knowing how to relieve that guilt that soon develops and comes a moment for having done something wrong. So they are ignorant of the fact that sin separates us from God and keeps us from His kingdom. And that sin brings with it misery, including human misery brought on by human actions. A lot of people, when they look at the misery in the world, they try to blame all kinds of different sources, failing to realize that when you take it all to a true, it all is rooted in sin. All rooted in disobeying God's law or society's law. Even human, even natural disasters are caused because of original sin in the garden. Remember when God created the world, it was good. Everything was good. And Adam and Eve got along with everything in the garden. Everything God had created. But when they let sin in the world, then it sinned the whole world. It upset perfect nature. It upset perfect relationships. It caused things to go out of God's original plan. So they're ignorant of the sin and misery, ignorant of the fact that they will find salvation, relief, and comfort through faith in Jesus Christ. So St. Paul is saying, we're not in this. We're not part of it because in Jesus Christ, we know sin. We know the effects of sin has on ourselves and on other people. We know the misery that sin brings when people give in to selfishness and greed and all types of other sins that we human beings commit. And so we are thankful that we have been taken from that darkness into the light and being thankful for that, we should want to share it with those who are still in the darkness. We should still want them to be able to be saved, to be able to spend eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Before his, or right before his ascension, Christ gave to us a new responsibility. Before he ascended, he said, Go therefore into all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all to the close of the age. This is our duty. This is our responsibility. This is a great commission. It's not the great plea. It's not the great if you would. It's not the great can you. It's the great commission. We have been commissioned. Just like an officer is commissioned in the military or in the police or fire department, we have been commissioned to be the light in the darkness. To bring this light to those who are unsaved. And we should be concerned about those who are unsaved. Now this responsibility is not just the responsibility of the missionary. It's not just the responsibility of the evangelist. It's not just the responsibility of the bishop or the pastor or the deacon. It is the bishop of, it is the responsibility of every Christian. Each and every baptized member of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ is called to this commission. Called to this
this duty to be a light in the darkness. Without us, those drowning in sin and separation from God have no hope. They're like the man who fell overboard, who is ready to go down for the last time until that light came out of that portal and illuminated his hand so that he could be rescued. Thousands upon thousands, if not millions upon millions of people daily are going under the water for the first, second, and third time with no lifeboat in sight to rescue them.
saying, well, because this has happened in the Middle East, and this has happened in Europe, and this has happened in America, so that Jesus come. Jesus said he was coming as a thief in the night. When, before he ascended, when he was in the upper room with the apostles, he, they asked him when he would return. He said, I don't know. Only my Father in heaven knows when I will return. And now St. Paul is repeating that truth. We do not know when Jesus will return. And because of that, we have to be a light in the darkness. We have to be that light in the darkness so that others may enjoy the good news of relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We have to be a light in the darkness for a hurting and searching world. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding in your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing, I will sing the wondrous story which is on your back cover. If you happen to be fans of the Gaithers, the Gaithers singers, you will know this hymn and recognize it because they sing it often. Uh, so, of course, I will sing the wonder story on the back page of the
we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all peoples according to their needs. Our response today is, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with compassion on your Church. Protect all your children from an evil, unbelieving heart that would lead us away from you into the deceitfulness of sin. By your Spirit's power, enable us to hold our original confidence Firm it to the end, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you have said always warned to the danger that attachment to wealth and early, earthly goods possess to us. Give us hearts that are content with its promises and hands that are generous with this world's goods, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, be with those who sacrifice their time and health to defend and protect us from all enemies and from all danger during the day and during the night. Strengthen their families, especially during all night, the long tours of duty, whether home or abroad. May your blessing be upon all who serve in our military, as first responders, as members of our police and fire departments, and all others who work to protect us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Only good one. We place into your hands this day those we know and love together with those known only to you who are passing through difficult and trying days, asking for each a sharing your healing and peace, hope and joy, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks and praise for your faithful at every time and place, who hearing your word held their confidence firm to the end. May we with them have our share of the promised eternal inheritance through Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. for our offering. Our ushers today are Mike and Debbie Cochran. They will be collecting.
Again, our souls in Canada have difficulty with the least bit. Endeavoring to be one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus calls. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our worship with the spirits that is forth to serve in number 551 in the back of your worship. In number 551. service uh, for October 14, 2018. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield.